What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to visualize graph search algorithms in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to visualize graph search algorithms in Python today, or we could also say graph traversal algorithms. And in particular, we're going to look at two strategies called BFS and DFS. So breadth first search and depth first search. Those are just two different strategies on how to explore the graph if we're looking for something or if we just want to go through the individual nodes. The order is different depending on the algorithm. And in this video, we're going to focus on BFS and on DFS, we're going to visualize both and we're going to code the logic from scratch. However, we are going to use two external Python packages, network X and matplotlib for working with graphs and for the visualization process. So we're going to start by opening up a command line and using pip to install network X and matplotlib. And once we have that, we're going to say import Q. This is just a built in Python uh, package that we can use for a Q data structure. And then we're going to also say import network X S N X and import matplotlib.pyplot S P L T. That's basically it. And now we're going to basically define two functions that take a set of nodes and order them in the way they should be traversed. So you have a graph and the graph consists of different nodes and edges and we want to have a order uh, in which we want to traverse that graph. So the BFS order, the breadth first uh, search order is basically going as broad as possible first and then going deeper. So maybe I can use my paint here to briefly sketch this. So if you have a uh, maybe a starting node here and you have multiple neighbor nodes in the beginning. And then those neighbor nodes go deeper into other neighbor nodes and stuff like that. What BFS would do is it would go as broadly as possible first. So we would start here, then we would go here, 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 and then we would go here, 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 and then deeper layer by layer. Whereas DFS would go as deep as possible before going uh, broad. So what it would do it, it is it would start here and it would go here and then it would go as deep as possible to all the neighbors until it starts then going to the other neighbors into the other neighbors. And only when everything here is explored, it's going to go into this branch and into all the sub branches here. And then it would go back and then it would go back here, start with this one and so on. So as deep as possible before going broad, this is the DFS, DFS, and the other one was the BFS. That's the basic idea. So we're going to start by implementing the BFS. We're going to say order BFS is going to be a function. It takes a graph, which is going to be a network X graph, and it's going to take a start node so that we have uh, a beginning. And the basic idea now is to just go through all the neighbor nodes and then to go through their neighbor nodes and to just iterate over them. So basically, layer by layer, as I said, so this is quite simple, because all we need to do here is we need to have a set that keeps track of the already visited nodes. We need to have a queue, which is going to be a first in first out queue, so a FIFO queue. And this is just going to be Q dot Q. And we're going to put here first a start node. And then we're going to have an empty list, which is going to be the order. This is just going to be the notes in the correct order in the BFS order. And all we want to do here now is we want to say while not Q dot empty. So while we have notes to be processed in the queue, and in the beginning, we only have to start node, while there is something to be processed in the queue, what we want to do is we want to say the vertex. So the note is going to be whatever we get here. So whatever is in the queue, the next element to be processed, we're going to get it out of queue, it's going to be the vertex. And if the vertex is not already no, actually without this, if the vertex is not in uh, visited, so it's the first time we visit this vertex, what we're going to do is we're going to append it to the order. And we're going to append it, of course, we're going to add it to the visited set. So vertex is going to be appended to the order, it's going to be added to visit it. And then now we want to go through all the neighbors of this vertex and we want to put them into the queue. So we're going to say for node in graph vertex. 
if the node, so those are all the neighbors of vertex, if the node is not already in visited, we're going to schedule the node for processing in the queue. So we're going to say queue, queue dot put note. So think about um, how this works. So we have the start node and what we do is we see, okay, we get the node, it's not unvisited, we append it, it's the first node we traverse, uh, we say we already visited that node. And what we do then is we go through all the neighbor nodes. So neighbor one, neighbor two, neighbor three, neighbor four, go through all of them, put all of them into um, so basically, this is what we do here, all of them into the queue, and then we go into those. And whenever we put, uh, whenever we put their neighbors into the queue, they're going to be after the nodes that are the direct neighbors of start node, because those were put into the queue first. So we go layer by layer by layer. This is the BFS order. Now for the DFS order, we're going to use recursion. And if you don't know what recursion is, I recommend you check out one of the most, uh, one of the first videos on my channel here where I explain recursion. And basically recursion is a function calling itself. So we're going to have a graph again, we're going to have a start node again. And since we're always going deeper and deeper and deeper until there is an end, recursion makes a lot of sense here, uh, even though of course, it would be possible to do it without recursion as well. But recursion might be intuitive, and we need to return the order here, by the way. Um, recursion is an intuitive approach, I think for DFS. So what we do here is we say, and for this, we also need a parameter visited here, it's going to be none. In the beginning, if visited is none, this is the first iteration or the first recursion, the first base call that we have here. And we're going to say that visited is an empty set. Then what we want to do is we want to define again an empty order list. And we want to say if the start node is not in visited. Then what we want to do again is we want to append it to the order visited dot add uh, start note. And then what we want to do is we want to say for neighbor. Actually, we can call this note again for note in graph start note. If note not in visited, what we want to do is we want to extend the order list by order DFS. This is now the recursive call graph. This note is now the start note. And then we pass the visited set. And what's the problem here? Ah, yeah, of course, we return none in the end. Uh, so we need to return the order. That's the basic idea. So what we do here is we go into a node and then this graph itself. So maybe again, let me use my paint here. Uh, we have a graph. Okay, I cannot draw for some reason. Let me just restart the program. There you go. So we have some starting node here, and it goes off into different directions. So here we have other nodes. And then we can go deeper here, for example, let's say, and what we do now basically is we start here as the starting node, we go through the neighbors and let's say if this is the first neighbor that we process, what we do now is we call this, this node here um, is now the separate graph. So so basically, this node is considered to be the starting point now. But this node is already in the visited set. So it's uh, no longer relevant. So we don't really care about this part here. And then we perform a DFS here again. So basically, he would go now to this node, for example, or actually, it would probably go to this node first, we'll say, Okay, here's, a, here's an end. So I'm done here, then it would go to this node and this node itself again, will be considered uh, its own graph, and it will be um, because this is already in the visited set, this would be its own graph, and we would perform another DFS in here. So we perform DFS after DFS after DFS. And recursively, at some point, you're going to, uh, to to, um, to end up on an ending point. And then of course, this uh, is done, it will just return this one note, and, and uh, there's a dead end here. But up until then, every subgraph can be considered its own graph that we perform a DFS on, because whenever the parent node that called the function um, is part of the visited set, we basically have like like a boundary here. 
Uh, I hope this was not too confusing, but this is the idea here behind this recursion. Um, so that's basically the order. So we have a BFS ordering and we have a DFS ordering. And now what we want to do is we want to perform a search or we want to actually, I mean, this was already the search. Uh, we're going to now visualize how these nodes are iterated. So what we're going to do, or traversed rather, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to define a function visualize underscore search, we're going to pass here an order, and we're going to pass a uh, title. And we're going to say PLT or actually, we don't need to pass a title, we can just uh, actually we are going to pass a title. So we're going to say PLT figure PLT title is going to be whatever we pass here as a title so that we can have two different titles for the two different searches. Uh, and we're going to say for I and note in enumerate so I being just uh, an enumeration index, we're going to enumerate the order, we're going to start with the number one. What we're going to do here now is we're going to say PLT clear figure. And then we're going to say PLT title is again title. And now we're going to call nx.draw. So the network x library has a draw function that can draw on um, or using matplotlib. So we can pass here the graph g. We can pass a position and the graph g is going to be something that we uh, define afterwards. So maybe one could argue that we should probably pass g here. Maybe this makes sense. Let's see. So we're going to uh, draw g, we're going to also uh, pass position here, or the layout, basically. So maybe we should also pass this to the function. Um, and then we're going to say with labels equals true note, underscore color is going to be equal to the following list comprehension, red, if n equals note, else green, for n in graph dot notes. So yeah, if the current node is uh, the node here, we're going to uh, to color it red, otherwise, we're going to color it green. Um, and then we're going to say PLT draw to actually draw this and we're going to say PLT pause so that we can have an animation 0 0.5 seconds. And at the end, we're going to say PLT show. And then we're going to say time dot sleep. 0.5 seconds for this, we need to also import the core Python module time, just so we can have some pause after uh, this visualization so that we can start with the next visualization. That's the basic idea. And that is uh, what's the problem here. That is basically it. So we have the ordering for the BFS the ordering for the DFS, we have the visualization function. And now all we have to do is we have to come up with a graph. So uh, we can go ahead and say g equals nx dot graph. And we're going to say g add underscore edges uh, at edges underscore from actually and here we're going to pass a list of tuples. And these lists uh, or this list of tuples here is just going to define the edges. So a is connected to b, then we have uh, a is connected to c as well. And by defining an edge, you also define the node. So by saying there's an edge between A and B, you also define that there is a node A and a node B. This is implicit. We're going to say here B and D is, a, is an edge, then we have uh, B and E is an edge. And then we have C and F is an edge. And then finally, we have C and G being an edge. And then we just say position, I think this is what this stands for. This is a convention, NX spring layout. So we just want to have a certain layout, uh, positioning of the individual nodes visually, this is going to be the positioning. And then all we have to do is we have to say visualize search, G, or actually first the uh, BFS ordering. So we're going to say here, order BFS, and the graph is going to be the graph G and the starting node is going to be uh, the node A. So we're just going to pass the string A here, we're going to pass and also G again. Oh, actually, we Oh, sorry, uh, 
just graph and start node. This is what we pass here. Then after this function call here, this is the ordering. We also want to have the title BFS visualization. And then we want to also pass the graph itself again here separately and the position. So I think this should be right. Let's see if it works. There you go. You can see how this happens. And maybe we should slow it down so that I, I can explain this again a little bit. For those who are still confused about the ordering. Basically, we start at A, we go to B. But before going to E and D, we go to C because we go layer by layer. So we go first immediate neighbors and then their neighbors. And if we had more nodes, we would expand layer by layer. That's the idea of the BFS. Now, we can also go ahead now and do the same thing with the DFS. So instead of saying BFS, I can say DFS, and then you're going to see a different traversal. We go to B, but before going to C now, we go as deep as possible. So first D, first E, then we go to the next immediate neighbor of AC, and then we go deep again. Uh, maybe to see this on a more sophisticated graph, we can write a another function which is going to generate a graph that is connected and random. So we're going to define a function here, generate connected random graph. And this function is just going to take the number of edges and the number of nodes. So n and m nodes and edges. And we're going to say while true. So until it works, I'm going to just generate here brute force nx gnm random graph, I'm just going to generate a random graph with n nodes m edges. And then I'm going to check if this graph is connected. So nx is connected this graph. If this graph is connected, return it, otherwise generate a new one until we get one that is connected because we don't want to have uh, isolated components there. So what I can do now is I can say g equals generate random graph, let's say 20 nodes, 20 edges, the positioning is going to be again a spring layout. And what we need to change here now is we don't have a anymore, the default, uh, default labels are 0, 1, 2, and so on. So we're going to start with 0 here. And we're going to go for a BFS first again. And we're not going to get the same graph um, twice here. So pay attention to this. You can see we have the BFS, which will first, uh, I mean, this is kind of a tree, maybe let's start this again. Yeah, there you go. So we go here, or maybe I should have more edges to make this more interesting. Let's say we want to have 30 edges. There you go. So you can see now it goes first to all the immediate neighbors of zero before going any deeper into the graph. And then it goes to their immediate neighbors before going any deeper. So again, it goes layer by layer. Um, if I go for a DFS now, and this is going to be a different graph now, but still, if I go for DFS, you can see it first goes as deep as possible uh, before going into any other. Uh, now, coincidentally, this is also neighbor now of zero. So maybe let's start this again. But you can see hopefully here, it won't, if we look at three now, it won't go to all the neighbors of three first, it will go as deep as possible down a particular route before going to any other immediate neighbor of three. That's the idea of DFS. And since the graphs are kind of uh, connected in an odd way here, mm -hmm. uh, this is maybe not the best example, but this is how you can visualize a BFS and a DFS search in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.